Hey. <coughs> hello, everybody. Welcome to the sound test room. I'd like to welcome everyone who's here this evening. Hello. Hello. OK, so today we are taking uh, a good look at Drum Computer. So Drum Computer by Sugarbytes. <coughs> It appears to be uh, quite complex, and to be fair, it, it is quite complex, but once you kind of understand one section or one or two sections, you you understand the whole thing. So we're going to take a walkthrough of the entire thing and kind of, well, most of it, because you'll never get through it in, in our 40 minutes or whatever. But yeah, okay, so Drum Computer is a... It's kind of a drum machine, but it's a lot more than that, really. You have eight channels of drums uh so at the moment we're on channel one which has this sound and we have another seven channels to play with as well and each of these channels have a different completely different ui so a different synth engine for each each channel now what we're going to do is we're going to set up an initial patch. We tap on the preset browser here and go to Sugarbytes and we find a patch called init and that's it. So this won't have anything in it at all and it will just have a basic sound set and it'll be quite quiet. So we're going to turn it up a little bit for starters and we're gonna go where it says kit here and I'm gonna increase the warmth and the amount. I'm going to put it onto tape saturation. And I'm also going to turn up the level of channel one. So you can hear it a little bit. Okay, so this is your basic kit. So you have your kit control here, which is basically you can control the decay of the entire kit. You can modify the entire kit via the LFOs. You can control the pitch of the end, like the drum, sorry, Per drum uh, this way here and you can also randomize the sound so you can here you have your sequencer and you'll see now that the sequencer is completely blank so we'll start with putting a kick into this sequencer like this here and just play it so here we have a basic four on the floor Okay, so this is nice. We can now play with the sound of this first channel. Don't worry about this stuff. That's you, we, that's something else you can mess with. I've done tutorials on all of this, but I want to more or less a programming guide for the actual machine. So we'll go back to channel one where we have this kick. We can pan. Here, here are our reverb sends and here are our... our send level sort of thing so so if I take haul out now and then you can control your send amount here and then you also have a room which is kind of a, a much smaller reverb Okay. Now, if you mute something, you can unmute it. But if you have several instruments muted, you can unmute them all at the end here by the master fader. Now, let's see programming. So global programming section is you can tap on here and you can go okay well let's see uh, maybe I want a different kick sound okay or maybe you just want to randomize that kick sound and it will just randomize kicks because of the, the, the clever way that they've done the randomization here. you can tap on this and you can randomize everything or you can choose just to randomize kicks snares uh, I'm not sure you can see that. Let me see if I can just sort the contrast and brightness out a little bit so you can see. No, you can't really see, but it says kick, snare, clap. So if we wanted to say randomize a clap sound here, 
or choose a clap sound. Let's go back to kick. So you have three controls for the synth. You have a resonator, a wavetable, or an analog synth, and then a resynth or a sampler. So these two can be either a wavetable analog or a, a resynth and a sampler. They do different things. If we turn them all, well, all, all you're hearing now is the resonator because the wavetable and the resynth are muted. So we can unmute them. And then we can start to play with the sound. This is the wavetable. You can track through the wavetable. You can increase the pitch. Or control the volume. But you can also modulate, use frequency modulation against the resonator. So if I turn off the resynth and I turn off the resonator, all you're hearing is the wave table, but we can still use we can still use frequency modulation to modulate the resonator. And then we could bring that back in if we wanted to. And then you can also change the wavetable here. So you've got lots of different choices. Now, <laughs> I tried importing some of my own, but it didn't work. So I'm probably doing something wrong. But, you know, we could go analog and say, this is for the wavetable. Fine tuning for the pitch. So... Double tap to reset. A level. And then um, this is ring mod. Let's switch the resynth back on now. Switch off the resonator and the wave turbo. And now all you're hearing is the resynth. This is a filter, so low pass, high pass, and at the moment it's going to, all three of these instruments are going to this filter here. So we can switch that off and this will have no effect. Switch each one on, you won't hear these because I've got them turned off. And then you have a, like a, an EQ. This is very nice. You have a distortion, two different types of distortion. And a compressor. And you can side chain the compressor to any of the other drums. This is going really dark now. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to turn this back up. I can't see it. Okay, so let's turn these back on. You've also got an analog synth. Now you can also change the recent type here, so we could go with kick. Control the decay of each instrument of each synth engine. Then you have modulation, so this would be pitch mod. You'll hear it more if I turn this up or and you can see the shape here. So we could go. You also have these modulation controls and these are fast, right? So at the moment, this is set to modulate the cutoff. We 
got you've got different shapes as well. You can set it to modulate global pitch, but you can literally set these to modulate absolutely anything. So, cut off pitch, uh, BK, and it's the same with this as well. So, it's modulated in a wave. Or we can have it modulate the frequency modulation. And then you have different global ones. And these are to do with what's going on when you go to the sequence of the modifier page. So let's get a kind of a better kick sound going. Now this page, so we'll leave that as our kick as a, as a basic start, okay? The kick page basically gives you control over the kick. Now we're using the modifier control for modulation. That's pretty cool, I like that there. So that's a that's a that's a half decent kick. So let's go to our next one. This snare. Let's mute the kick. So let's say well that's it. not a bad sound. Now when you, when you start to do this you're on it what I suggest you do is we'll go and save this as um, I'll just save it as live stream so that we're now working on our kit and we can keep saving it's always a good idea to save everything all the time although if you do come out of drum computer and come back in and don't change any presets and stuff it will still be there. So let's bring this back in shall we um, did I stop play so let's go to our sequence law and put in some it's very quiet let's go back to our kit um sorry our thing Send them to the filter. Okay. Cool beans, that sounds all right. Let's give it a bit of, let's give this a bit of room. That's nicer. and put a bit of extra so that's a better pattern so with the sequencer we have tons of control over all sorts of stuff with these modifying these parameters here we can control the velocity so if you add if you add in right that's for the kick drum if we go to number two these are our track controls here by the way so if you notice 
if I'm on this snare, you'll see the velocity is here, here, and here. If I put another snare hit in, it will add another velocity point. And then we can control that velocity. And if we take it all the way down, the, the step will disappear. Or we can add a step in by just moving the velocity slider. We can have this go backwards and forwards. Look at just the snare. We can shuffle each point along. We can randomize the pattern. I don't want to randomize it quite like that. But you're just randomizing the snare. And then you can also just delete that snare pattern. Well, let's get back to this, right? So, velocity and randomize the velocity. That's, that will take the velocity settings away. So I'm going to have to put them back in. You have this which will invert whatever's here. Okay, so that just inverts any settings that you have down here. Then you have a ramp up. I'll show you that in a sec. And then you will have this other one. So if I put some... Uh, hi-hats in now, so I'll just put some hi-hats in the sequence. Let's go make some adjustments to the sound. go to our ramp invert the ramp or randomize it to give it a human feel probability this is obvious if we start to move this slider up now the probability is going to be whether each of these hits play let's randomize it you start to get a human feel roll is ratcheting basically so if we select the roll on here we can choose the amount get a boom bap kind of thing you can move these off grid so if we go back to our kick and I'm on offset I can offset these kicks watch so it's slightly off grid decay would be good for the hi-hat so save it and then pitch pitch is really cool pitch is going to sound good if we start to mess around with it on the hi-hats and then the 
is the mod amount that's applied from the modulation. Where, where, whatever you have going on there sort of thing. So, Okay, let's go back to track four. Let's stop this. So in track four, let's put in, let's go to this sampler engine, choose this, and choose some, uh, actually not the sampler engine, I'm gonna go to the resynth, choose chord, and maybe this one. Increase the decay. to our sequencer choose lane number four and just put one in at the very beginning maybe put another one in here well, let's increase the pitch let's change the pitch modulation not the pitch <laughs> Let's change the resolution. things here these little eyes if the eyes are open you will see the swing now the swing will affect the second right so it will affect the second and the fourth step you see so you get a shuffly swing feel the human eyes will kind of move everything slightly off grid either way so you'll you can actually see it move 
and that will humanize the feed. At least as a global setting. Okay, so if your eyes are closed here, you you can still apply the swing, but you won't see any change to the grid. So let's play this and apply some swing. Let's look at what's happening. It's more of a human feel. Now if we go back to our drum, we can now we can randomize that kick. Go to the snare. originally a clap engine so let's go into this here and choose chord right and I have to pick a chord first so now I don't know why it's not changing it to remix will do is, is you can control this by hand here and this is kind of the amount of remixing you want to do and it'll remix everything it'll use instruments that aren't even in the mix it'll just sound really cool you switch auto one on and every four bars it will do a random fill and then auto two is the same kind of thing but a different kind of fill so if we hit remix now and play it and then we move our remix control let's hit save as well that's really nice. Let's listen to Auto One. also do is you can create polymeters or polyrhythms or whatever whatever they're kind of called thanks Nom. yeah it's also in AUV3 and it also does multi act yes so it's very it's very cool is using it in AUM but the the key is pro learn, knowing how to program it so it sounds like you want it to sound because it, it's so tempting which we'll do in a, a, a little while we'll just blast through a load of patches but 
it's so tempting just to do that and use what's there, you know. Anyway, let's do this. I've saved, just saved this kit, but you can also change the duration of any of the tracks by, there's, see these little handles here, these little drag handles. You can, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just putting taking stuff out there, but let's put them back in. If we grab here, we can, so we could change that one to there. And then the hi-hats we won't really notice unless we start to take a few of them out, of course, and then we'll notice it. So now we've created, we've made these two patterns, these two tracks, different lengths, and we'll get this kind of, it will constantly evolve, so. This one we need to change up a bit. So it's never gonna be the same. Well, it will eventually, but you know. So we could save that as well. randomize it okay that's the sound from track six let's add some let's go in and add some pitch um, Let's go back to the synth engine, shall we? And and we can send the pitch mod to different envelopes. this right if we if we pick make kit it's gonna it'll keep the pattern but it'll randomize all the sounds in the kit but don't worry we haven't lost our kit so if it was crap we can always just revert back to our save state so check this out make kit back to user and we're back to our our original now if you like the sound of the make kit as well you can just save that as a completely different pattern so you could just go in and save that now to our original 
on our random. Here's another thing, right? This little pin here, what this will do will, I, I'm not sure if it either, it holds the, the sounds, but just changes the pattern. Okay, so let's see. Or it, keep, it keeps the pattern, or changes the sound. much to go into now but basically you can you can choose which patterns you want if you set chain you can choose whichever patterns you've done like set up to chain together and play as you're playing i have done a tutorial with this so but not for a long time but there you go so basically guys that's 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 it you easiest way to do this is to literally Go to uh, where it says sugar by team. Go and find the init, the init preset, and we can then start to randomize. Let's make a kit. So random. To make life easy, go into kit. Let's get a bit of this going on. Let's turn up the, the master. And it's it's so cool, right? It's so cool. We go into sequencer and in our global settings here, just let's randomize everything. And now we've got a pattern without doing anything. And we can just continually randomize. Randomize this track. Randomize the kick. Let's go to roll and randomize the rolls for track four go back to this don't like this programming guide for drum computer by sugar bites which is genuinely a marvelous thing um very very creative a little tiny learning curve but really genuinely nothing mega 
I think it's just, you know, it's a, it's 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 it is very scritty, any. It I. It's fun. It's a fun thing to program. The sequencer is marvellous. My only, only wish would be that I could use the pads to program the initial beat. But, you know, you can't have everything, can you? <laughs> uh, but you can't. You can't do that. So, you know, let's try a random pattern here. So for the next five minutes, folks, I am just going to blast through a ton of these patches uh, so you can get an idea of what the thing is really capable of when you actually dig. Thanks, Colin. When you actually dig in to it, the sequence of pages is amazing. Start with always try to start when you're learning it or anything really is start with a initialized patch and you'll be OK. So again, for fun, initial patch. Let's make a kit. So let's turn this up a bit. I like to add a bit of, they keep the volumes quite low. So for instance, this one, let's go and change this to a synth sound. Let's randomize uh, a pattern. Let's just have this one, and let's just have this on one eight. That'll sound very ominous. Yeah, so super easy. You've made something brand new. Number six, let's add some rolls. Some probability, maybe. Maybe some pitch. Yeah, that's true, you can't play them in. That's the only thing people ever moaned about. Put auto on. Awesome. So let's jam for five minutes. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully see you all tomorrow with more madness. Thank you. Ta-da!